Welcome back YouTube. Today's goal was to find out for sure what kind of interference I'm gonna have with those side rails and the tire. For that to happen, I needed to put the whole axle assembly with the springs, everything, the adapters, the wheels, the tires, everything in its place to see what the final fit was going to look like. When I'm assembling, I don't really like messing with dirty, nasty, greasy, rusty parts. So I went on ahead to start the cleaning and rebuilding process. And that was to clean and rebuild these springs and see if there was anything in there worn or cracked or broken. I've started this process by spritzing a little bit of PB Blaster on the bolt to loosen them up and then remove the clamp that goes around the back end of the leaf springs. The clamp has a hole that it's centered on and that designates the rear of the leaf springs. I got an etching tool and attempted to scratch in there P for passenger, D for driver. However, I knew the spring metal would be pretty hard and the etcher didn't have any effect on the spring. Next, I removed the nut from the bolt and you can see that these springs are under pressure. I made a mistake here. I would suggest that you have a C-clamp on these springs to hold them together while you pull this bolt and nut apart. Following disassembly of the springs, I wanted to clean them to paint them. I just paint them black. So I got a wire brush on a small hand grinder and wire brush them to knock off all the loose metal and old paint and prep them for painting. I went on ahead and looked for any cracks or any imperfections in the springs so that I could get any kind of damage replaced or repaired while it's apart. Following the wire brushing and cleaning, I used Rust-Oleum Glossy Black Paint. It's an oil-based paint. It takes a little bit of time to dry to paint the individual pieces, and now it's time for reassembly. As you can see here, I use a pair of vice grips and a C-clamp to slowly compress the spring so that the bolt will be able to stick up through the hole, and I can put the nut on the bolt. Keep in mind, this thing's under pressure while I'm doing this, and I don't want anything to pop loose and hit me in the face. Once I have the nut down far enough on the bolt that I know it's going to hold, then I can remove the C-clamp and the vice grips and use the impact driver and a pair of channel locks to tighten the nut up. Now it's time to replace the sheet metal clamp on the back end of the leaf springs. I slid it into place and now I'm going to bend it back into shape and clamp it down on the springs. I've told you all this before, but I wanna make sure that you understand I'm doing this twice. I'm just not showing you both sides. So I'm having to do this for both springs on both sides, the driver's side and the passenger side. Once the springs have been cleaned and painted, it's time for a test fit of the axle. I had already painted the axle in a previous video. I already welded on the spring pads for the flip kit as well. And so the springs are gonna sit on top of the axle, not underneath the axle. I had painted the U-bolts and the spring pads and all the parts and we're going to test fit them as well, make sure everything fits together and I'm really not tightening anything, just test fit it.
on these U-bolts, you want to evenly distribute the tension on all four bolts. So you don't really want to tighten down on one, you want to kind of keep it even all the way around. Now that I've got the U-bolts on, it's time to install the wheel adapters. Make sure that all the parts are clean when you install these wheel adapters. I had already tried to fit the tire in between this frame rail and the hub and it wasn't going to fit. So I had to remove the bolt from the rear of the leaf spring and push down on the leaf spring to be able to get the tire in place. Once the leaf spring was down and the tire could be lifted up and put up onto the hub, then I could put the lug nuts on it. This is obviously something I'm not going to want to do on the side of the road on a highway. So I'm definitely gonna to have to do something with this frame rail to get it out of the way so that it's easier to change tires if I had a flat tire. And now it's time to see the final result. I like the way it sits up. I like the height of it. I think the tires look really nice on there. The only thing I don't like is that frame rail going across like that. And that's been something I've talked about for several videos now. And now I know how high that frame rail's got to go. I have the metal for it, and it's time to start cutting and welding. Give you the once around view of all the angles. And you can see I've got plenty of room on the inside and the outside. Uh, you can also notice that the stabilizing jacks in the back are not going to be long enough to touch the ground now that I have lifted the trailer up. So I'm gonna need new stabilizing jacks as well or repositioning these. Thanks for watching YouTube. I hope you learned something. More to come.